Hey guys, if you're here with Doug, AK The Real Link, coming at you today with another quick MacBook Pro Retina upgrade tutorial. A client came to me the other day and said, hey, if they be possible to upgrade the internal SSD on this machine, something that Apple claims is not readily doable by the end user. This machine is an early 2015 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro running Mac OS X 10.10.5 Yosemite has Mac Identifier 12.1 or model A1502. As Macs have become less and less upgradable by the end user and pre-configured when purchased through Apple or an Apple store, it can get really frustrating that you can't change out any of your parts. But thankfully with these older machines, all hope is not lost. Let's begin. Keep in mind guys that this tutorial needs a couple extra parts additionally here beyond what was featured in my last tutorial video when we upgraded a client's SSD and RAM. As such, feel free to check the description below this video where I'll conveniently list all the parts used so that you know what to purchase should you choose to do this yourself. All of our links are Amazon affiliated, so just keep in mind if you purchase anything it gives me a very tiny commission and it is appreciated. Thank you very much. Alright guys, let's get to work upgrading this machine. First off, you'll need a screwdriver with a pentalobe 2, 3, and 5 bit along with the Torx T5 and T6 bit. While the iFixit kit here happens to have all those and more, really any screwdriver set works fine if it has those necessary bits. Next for our NVMe SSD, we're using a Samsung 970 EVO 500 gig SSD. Next, the most important part of this is because Apple uses a proprietary pin layout in its connections for its SSDs, we need a converter to adapt a regular PCI PC SSD to what Apple connects with. For this, we're using a Syntec SLED adapter off Amazon for about $15, which will convert the pins from Apple to PC standard. While purchasing an SSD from other world computing or other sites that just interface direct with the Apple standard work just as well, and then you don't need a sled, I've heard various comments as to the reliability of the drives from a sleep state and that you can probably obtain even higher performance from the PC-oriented parts anyway. Also keep in mind you'll need a backup external hard drive or SSD that you can work with to backup your current system image with Time Machine as we're going to be using the Apple Recovery Console on boot to restore from our backup here. For this, we're using a one terabyte Seagate Backup Plus drive. This particular Mac model is the dual core i5 with hyperthreading model 5257U, 2.7 gigahertz, eight gigs of low profile DDR3 1866 RAM, which is locked in at purchase, and an Apple brand 128 gig SSD code MF 839LL slash A. This particular SSD uses Apple's Gen 4 proprietary connection pinout, but we have an adapter for that. Its system information, the installed drive identifies as an Apple brand SSD using the SATA interface at X4 speed. Using Blackmagic speed test, we're able to get speeds on the SSD of about 250 megs per second write and about a gigasecond read on an SSD that's very nearly full so naturally speeds are a little bit below where they should be. Let's shut it down and swap it out. The first step after flipping the MacBook over is to use a Pentalope 5 screwdriver to remove the 10 Pentalope screws on the bottom of the machine. Keep in mind that the two located by the heat vents are a little shorter, so you want to be sure that you're putting all your screws in the proper holes when reassembling. Case screws, even for my tiny fingers, are very small, so do be careful or use a magnetic mat for retention. Once all screws are removed, simply use a prying motion on the back panel to lift it up and away. The next step is to remove the adhesive next to the power supply and the battery. Then remove the tab connecting the battery to the machine, providing power. This can be done with a spudger or by using a fingernail. Next use a Torx T5 bit on the SSD retaining screw.
lift the drive up about a quarter inch and gently pull to remove. Next you want to install the sled adapter into the empty space and then the SSD itself onto the sled. Though you could probably put the drive on the sled first. Either way, install both the sled and the SSD at very slight angles to the connectors and ensure they are firmly seated with the pins. Use the included Phillips Zero screw to lock both the drive and sled into the slot. Use a Phillips Type 0 bit to secure the SSD and slug together, all in one. You're now ready to reconnect battery power. Now replace the pentalobe screws. Two hours later. Hey guys, so we ran into a big snag here. It basically turns out that Mac OS X 10.10 Yosemite is simply too old, along with its associated Apple recovery volume and partition, to even recognize that this new drive exists. What Syntec and other sites recommend is to take your current Mac OS install and upgrade it through the App Store to 10.14 or 10.15, basically Mojave or Catalina or higher this way that you'll be able to detect the new drive. For booting, you can't use the internet recovery option. You'll instead have to run a terminal command to create a downloaded boot volume with an external 16 gig or greater USB drive. From there, we should be able to get this new drive installed and working correctly. Of course, if your Mac is already tight on space with a small SSD, you'll have to clear some of the space up to install the OS upgrade. Now that we've upgraded, be sure to use your external hard drive to run Time Machine and back up your entire disk image so that we have something to restore from. Once Time Machine finishes its initial backup of macOS Catalina, you'll want to prepare your bootable USB device. For this, we're using a large 64 gig SanDisk cruiser. Now that macOS and its associated boot ROM are upgraded, it should be able to detect our NVMe drive without any issue. Of course, the first step is preparing our new USB drive. For this, we have to go into Disk Utility, erase the contents, and be sure to reformat the drive as macOS Extended Journal. And now our USB drive has plenty of space for the macOS installer. Next, you'll want to create a bootable USB media device by using a sudo command via terminal after having your USB drive ready to go. Be sure to change your volume label, my volume, in the command to whatever name you gave your USB drive. In my case, it's just USB. Once you download macOS Catalina from the Apple App Store, you'll see it's about 8 gigs. You don't want to install it. Instead, we want this in our Applications folder to create our bootable USB. Now with the installer package in our Applications folder, we get a prompt after running our terminal command to create our bootable media. Put in your user or login password and erase the disk. You might get a notification from Terminal asking us if we want to use a removable disk. For this, just simply allow. It will erase the disk and then copy the installer. All right. With the disk copied over, it looks like we're good to go. We can shut the machine down, do our drive swap, and then go into system recovery on boot, and then restore from our most recent time machine backup. Okay, with the machine back together, we're ready to power back up. To access safe recovery mode, we want to press and hold Command and R during the startup chime. From here, we want to select launch time machine backup and select from our external hard drive. From here, the machine reboots and we're presented with the recovery console. 
we want to select Disk Utility to erase and format our new SSD. And now we can see our new SSD as part of our media choices that we can install to. Yeah, I just decided to call this drive the Samsung 970 EVO and reformatted it using the Apple file system. Keep in mind that the APFS file system is designed for newer versions of macOS such as Catalina and doesn't necessarily work with lower versions of macOS. Once we are done formatting our SSD, we want to restore from our Time Machine backup. Here we see our current list of Time Machine backups to select from. Next you'll be presented with various disks to restore to. Of course we're going to want to restore to our new SSD and it will be prompted to be erased in the process. Select Erase and let the restore begin. Depending on how many files you have on disk and the speed of your restore media, it may take quite some time for the process to complete. Once the restore completes, the machine will reboot automatically. You may be prompted with an iCloud sign-in once restored, as this machine probably identifies as new. After iCloud and FileVault setup, the OS loads, and it's as if your Mac has never changed. Here, we happen to open back up to the App Store. Upon inspecting the drive once some personal files are copied back, we can see that we have almost 400 gigs available to use. Let's test with Blackmagic again and see if our disk speeds have improved. It appears that our installation was successful. For some fun, let's open up everything on the dock. Hey guys, that's a wrap. I hope you found this video informative and helpful in the process of upgrading your own MacBook Pro to a bigger SSD. As you can see, we've upgraded this machine to a drive that's far higher capacity and better performing than the Apple stock drive. Obviously, we had a little bit of issue with the Apple bootloader and that's something I was not aware of, but once the OS upgrade was in place, the actual swapping process, backup, and restore from macOS Catalina worked flawlessly, no issues at all. Thank you to Syntec for providing detailed instructions. And as always guys, feel free to read the description below for the parts used and for the terminal command that you need to make your bootable media. And if you like this video, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.